Hey guys, today I'm working on this uh, BMW. It has a problem with the AC compressor, which is not turning on. And so, um, basically, there's not much to it. Uh, there's the trouble code for it and the JBE, which is the one that activates the um, compressor. I guess we just kind of get right in it. Like I said, there's not much to it. Um, there's just a compressor. Um, it does have a clutch, but it does have a uh, control valve in it as well. <clears throat> so, um, and it is not controlled by the DME. The JBE is the one that actually um, will control it. But um, just a quick glance at it uh, when pulling up service information. Here is the two wire control valve and that is PWM controlled and then you've got a single wire that goes to the clutch and then it's grounded uh, to the housing and then here is your main three pin connector that has the PWM a ground for the PWM and then the uh, one single wire that goes to the clutch so that's your three pins at the main connector now the um, in this diagnosis instruction section um, basically it explains uh, what I guess they call a protective function uh, during blocked air conditioning compressor so um, basically it's saying that a thermal safeguarding in the I guess molding compound of the coil in the uh, magnetic coupling serves as a protective function during a blocked air compressor if the thermal load on the magnetic coupling reaches a certain temperature uh, the thermal safeguarding responds as a result the voltage supply for the clutch basically is interrupted um, then the clutch is open when de-energized. Uh, by doing this, transmission of the torque from the belt pulley to the driver um, that is connected within the shaft of the air conditioning compressor is interrupted. So basically it's stating that um, <coughs> and then it says uh, if thermal safeguarding responds, meaning if it, it's in this mode the air conditioning compressor must be replaced so uh, I guess due to a certain temperature in the coupling or clutch um, that is seen it can determine if there is a uh, issue with the compressor and then it won't activate the um, clutch and like I said uh, it's pretty cool that it has that function and mode and then when you go in here and scan the JPE compressor clutch short circuit to ground um, I'm assuming that is the whole same uh, safeguarding mode that it is talking about so what I'll do, I'll quickly show you. And yes, there's Freon in there and all all the basics and stuff. Um, I just when I went to run the AC, I could tell that it, obviously it wasn't running. So I've got the key on just to show you. I'm gonna back out of here. I'm gonna clear the code. And then, obviously, there's nothing there because I'm assuming it has to attempt to run the compressor in order for it to see that, that whole, uh, I guess, thermal load situation. So, key on again. We're still in the JBE. Let me just reread this. Obviously, haven't attempted to run it. We'll start the engine. And then there's 
the AC, would have attempted to run it back out, reread, and right away it's able to tell and or see that uh, there's an issue with the compressor. So, based on the factory literature, service information, whatever you want to call it, the trouble code that is stored and logged, uh, it is, I guess, pretty safe to say that the compressor would need to be replaced, and that is this guy here. That there is the three pin connector. Now the middle one is the ground for the PWM. I believe the one on the left is pin one, which is the PWM control. And the far right is the uh, one that goes to the clutch. Uh, so basically, I just want to, uh, I'm going to tap into the PWM. And I'm going to do an amp clamp on the uh, signal line because I'm not sure if it's gathering the whole supposed thermal uh, overload based on amperage. But here, uh, when they, they do give you some uh, values, so let's see here. Assignment. Okay, so just like I said, so the, that main three pin connector, um, here's your ground, your PWM, and what they call the signal line to the magnetic coupling. And as far as that signal line uh, values for magnetic coupling, you've got a uh, supply voltage, voltage range. Uh, I guess max torque, power consumption in, uh, I guess that in watts, power consumption in amps. <clears throat> that being that we've got this here, obviously we know we are going to have 12 volts and we're going to be within that range. Uh, I have no idea about that. This being an amps is something that we can attempt to monitor and seeing if it's way out of that range when it, you initially attempt to run the compressor. If it is, and this is just like I said, out of just out of curiosity, wanting to visually see it go higher than that and just knowing that that is how this whole information is gathered and put the um, the HVAC into that uh, safeguard mode. And then, you know, values for the control valve um, that we have there. But on that, I am curious to see if we'll just see an initial attempt of control or um, or what. So, not too sure. But, um, like I said, just a cool little uh, attempt of experiment to try to see what kind of values we get with this supposed bad compressor and then compare it with a new one and see if what we gather corresponds with service information. Okay, so I've got the scope running. Um, I'm on just a 5 amp scale and then 20 volt. There's my connections, and I am going to clear the code first, so turn AC off, turn the blower off, key on, erase codes, yes, okay, let me cycle key. <coughs> I'm doing this because I want to just kind of start from fresh and then see what we uh, capture. So, key on, read, no code, okay. Start run, I'll turn it 
different blower on without the AC first. And then now we will. So there's that. And that should be enough. Okay, so. <laughs> Uh, pretty cool. So this is uh, where we were key on, uh, started in the vehicle, and then uh, must have been when we turned the AC button on. And I kind of did it on purpose. I set the five scale because, uh, let's see, what was that? No more than, what, three? So 2.8 to uh, 3.2. All right. So like I said, I set it at five amps on purpose, and the red is the amps. Um, actually, some, obviously it pegged it. I was kind of looking at the. I need to zero it, but that right there, about half amp. Uh, I doubt it's going to be uh, what's pegging it, but I am going to rerun it with a higher scale. But obviously you can see the, the PWM uh, turn on and activate, and the amperage just uh, pegging out. And it only for a short amount of time. As you can see. Wrong one. Let's see. So it looks like it's a uh, a pulse in the uh, clutch line, also, as you can see. But let me let's let's rerun this. Um, I'm gonna zero the amp clamp. Clear the code again and change the scale so let me start my the car is off so there's no amperage there so I'm not gonna undo it and I'll zero it okay so now we're zeroed there let's go to uh, uh, let's go to 20 Since we're on the 20 amp scale, we'll, we'll peg that out. Okay. Let's see. Erase codes, yes. Now you want to keep doing this because we want to keep attempting to control the clutch. So. Uh, start the vehicle. The clamp control is on, but the AC is not on right now. Um, I'm kind of waiting for my scope to go to the next screen before I uh, hit this. And okay, let's. Now I'm gonna let it go for a while. And then I'll shut this off and shut the car off. <clears throat> and I didn't shut off the AC till till a while after because I could see this. So it stopped controlling itself on its own, obviously. And we are able to, well, actually, let me pause this. Okay, now we are definitely able to get a uh, amperage measurement, which is definitely way higher than the uh, 3.2 amps. So it kind of, like I said, makes sense that uh, they would gather a, I guess, thermal protection based on amperage draw. Um, like I said, and, and again, I've never scoped any of this on on these, 
it's first time doing so and, and only doing so because having some time to kill and I visually wanted to see what's going on and how it based on the, 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 with the logic how it gathers and determines and, and comes to the conclusion all the way to the point of bringing a trouble code um, so by digging into the information uh, and being able to capture the amps uh, is why I'm doing this um, let's see, you know, let's move this out the way, so let's say at, somewhere at a peak type point, we are, so there, so about 18 and a half amps. Um, okay, that's pretty, uh, significant, definitely, for sure, so, um, and then, let's take a average range, bring it down to that point, uh, just over 17 and a half amps, so, um, there you go, um, you know, you can trust what the trouble code on this setup and vehicle is telling you. Um, you know, and like I said, you know, all your basic stuff, make sure you're free on, correct amount, everything is in there. Um, which even then at that point, I doubt that it would log this um, trouble code because it wouldn't be shorted and it would not be um, drawing that much amperage. So, I guess out in the field, if you get this trouble code, and like I said, that even before going in this step, this deep, um, it's pretty much sure shot that you can probably guess at it being a compressor. So if you run into this, kind of uh, be in a little bit of confidence that there's not much to it other than. Uh, the logic telling you what it's seeing and that it's pretty much just going to need a compressor so uh, I do have one coming uh, I will definitely get a shot of what a normal one looks like and compare it to the outcome of this and see what the difference is so again um, just doing this out of curiosity but it's pretty cool to be able to tie in that logic and everything that is written and explained that it's out there for a reason um, you know with a, a paragraph like this that explains why things happen or you know with with even giving you values to check and inspect so um, Try to always dig into service information. Um, it can help you down the road. If it wasn't something as easy and straightforward as this, if it, you find information on a different area of the vehicle that there's uh, values and stuff that you can check, why not dig for that and why not check it? You know, just uh, helps you be more confident and a little bit better of a technician and. Uh, it will make your life a lot less stressful if you are able to verify things, especially that are um, written to you by the uh, manufacturer. So, again, that's it. We'll get a new one coming and compare the uh, signals of that one. And that's it for this one. Okay, so I wanted to uh, show you guys that I uh, got the uh, original compressor out. And then, um, so this is the original one, this is the replacement one, and yes, it is a used one. This is my vehicle, and I chose to go with this because I've been putting a lot of money into it. Nonetheless, I uh, decided to, before installing it and scoping the amperage and all of that, to do it just a simple uh, ohm 
reading on the uh, clutch circuit just out of curiosity so um, this is the original and as you can see I'm in there the pin for the clutch and then over to the ground 0 0.3 Now to the replacement unit. Uh, let's see. Okay. Same spot. And 3.8. So this one actually has some resistance in it as opposed to basically zero ohms which would indicate that clear uh, short which uh, indicates the correct trouble code that was logged and then the high amperage that is drawn in so with that um, fairly confident that this should work um, as long as everything else is okay with it but electrically we do have and see a difference between the two we'll go ahead and install this and um, do a capture the same way we did previously okay the new compressor is installed got our connections uh, set up the same way we will start recording there I've not uh, started the vehicle or anything I've just identified it brought it back up on the screen and I will go ahead and clear the codes just like before we'll run through the same scenario uh, it's still recording okay Start the vehicle and let's see. Okay, there's climate, and I'm waiting for the uh, uh, next uh, page. Okay, so here goes nothing. Definitely a change, and it is blowing cold. All right, let me turn it off there. Go. Let me turn the car off. Okay. Oh. Well, you can clearly see uh, that this is totally different looking. Um, just to get an idea on the amperage. We're at three point seven amps. <clears throat> um, there's clearly no no short there, uh, which corresponds also with the uh, ohms reading that we took, and um, it's obviously holding steady all throughout. And um, you know it responds to the uh, switch request. So, like I said. Um, Pretty much nothing too crazy, um, even if you didn't have a scope, I'd say it is uh, worthwhile to trust the trouble code in this situation. Uh, it seems to uh, monitor it pretty well, and um, I guess that's it, I mean it's... Uh, Pretty straightforward, but like I said, at the same time, again, pretty cool to be able to see and identify it 
based on the literature that they give you in order to help you diagnose vehicles. So, um, another clear example, like I said, if you could find some literature, follow it, do it, take the extra steps, avoid any future problems, and um, that's it. We'll go ahead and um, I just to satisfy curiosity, you know there's going to be no code, so there we go. Everything is working. Uh, used compressor is good. Uh, be good enough for me. And that's all on this one. Hope you liked it.